ओके ओके सुनील प्लीज टेल अदर्स टू जॉइन फास्ट ओके so last class i think we discussed what was uh, we discussed about the distributed lattices okay so you have to refer to all those points which i had told you especially in the last class i have told you what distributed lattice is and how to find out whether a given lattice is a distributed lattice okay with this uh, we will just temporarily stop that third module uh, because i want to cover the fourth module also for your series so today i will be starting the fourth module uh, and um, some important topics will come to it later from third module during revision class will come to it and um, so let us move on to the fourth module see those who haven't yet joined please tell them to join first module 4 and here module 4 we have two sections in module 4 the first section is generating functions and the second section is solving recurrence relations solving recurrence relations solving recurrence relation so these are the two main that we come across in module 4 so we are dealing with the first section now and we will go to some problem in the recursive functions okay we will be moving on to recursive functions so let let's see what generating functions are generating functions so i'll just give you an introduction to it see generating functions see here these are certain functions that help us to solve some counting problems okay it is uh, if we have a sequence of numbers we can represent the sequence of numbers using certain functions so if you have a sequence like 1 2 3 4 etc or maybe i have a sequence like 1 1 1 etc an infinite sequence of 1 1 or an infinite sequence of 2 2 2 etc or an infinite sequence of 3 3 etc so a particular sequence of numbers to represent a particular sequence of numbers we can use functions and those functions that generate certain sequences are known as generating functions so instead of writing a particular sequence indefinitely we can represent it using a small formula or a small function and those functions that represent sequences of numbers are called generating functions okay is it clear those functions that represent a particular sequence of numbers let it be 0 1 1 2 etc or 1 2 3 etc or 1 minus 1 minus 2 etc or 1 minus 1 1 minus 1 that is another sequence isn't it any sequence 
like you have a sequence say one 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 etc this is a sequence then another sequence one zero 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 etc this is another sequence then uh, uh, we have zero zero <coughs> zero etc this is again another sequence or you have three two one zero etc it's another sequence then um, two four six eight this is again another sequence so these are sequences of numbers now instead of writing the sequence as such we can represent these sequences using functions and those sequences those functions are called generating function they generate certain sequences so any particular sequence you give one minus one one minus one etc this is again another sequence so to represent these sequences each sequence can be represented using a function f of n or f of x you can represent as f of n or f of x or uh, since it's a generating function most commonly we use g of x so using this function i can g of x i can represent a, these particular sequences and to represent these sequences of numbers we use generating functions okay so our aim is given a sequence how will we find out the generating function for this particular sequence and uh, you will be given sequences and you will have to find out the generating function corresponding to these sequences okay so generating functions are nothing but they represent a sequence and in uh, an infinite sequence of numbers so it is an infinite polynomial okay when we represent it as um, uh, a function it becomes uh, uh, an infinite polynomial and let us see how to represent this generating function see where are the rest I can see only 43 students here. Please tell others to join first. These are important questions for your exam. So, the definition goes like this. You have a, you are, you are given a sequence of numbers, A0, A1, a2 etc we had I, I told you examples like one 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 etc is a sequence or it can be um, uh, another sequence is two 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 etc is another sequence so here this uh, these sequences uh, these numbers one one etc they are represented by a0 a1 a2 or it, it can be two two or it can be one two three etc any sequence given these sequences of numbers are represented as a0 a1 a2 etc and uh, that forms a sequence of real numbers okay then how can we write the generating function for this real numbers let us see how to write the generating function the generating function either denote g of x or f of x can be written in this particular form this is the general form of the generating function you have to study this form that is it is the general form of the generating function okay how do you write the generating function that is So, I said that you can represent it as either uh, g of x or f of x. So, and this f of x is equal to, or it is written in the in powers of x, that is a0 x raised to 0 plus a1 x raised to 1 plus a2 x raised to 2 plus a3 x raised to 3 and so on. Okay, we had studied uh, one series uh, in second module, that is the binomial series, isn't it? Just like that, we have a generating series also. Okay, so there you had studied what binomial series is and uh, you had studied the sequence also and to find and solve problems using binomial series. Uh, but uh, now here, uh, we have a generating function. This is a general form of the generating function. Yeah, I can write it as f of x or as g of x. And now what is this term? A0 x raised to 0. X, a, a, any number raised to 0 becomes 1. So this becomes A0 plus x raised to 1 is x itself. So you get A1x plus 
a2x square plus a3x cube and so on. So this is called the sequence of numbers in which is expressed in powers of x. Powers of x, that is here it is x raised to 0, x raised to 1, x raised to 2, etc. And the sequence that we want here is a0, a1, a2, etc. And these sequences, they become constants, they become the coefficients of x. And so here the first uh, number is a0, second number you represent as a1 uh, with uh, x raised to 1, uh, uh, and third is a2, the coefficient of x raised to 2, and so on. And you are going to represent these sequences of numbers as a from in a functional form that is called the generating function. So this is the uh, this is a general form of the generating function. Okay, the sequence that you want to represent becomes the coefficients of powers of x. So here it starts with x raised to 0 and goes on in uh, infinitely. This is an infinite polynomial. Okay. It is an infinite polynomial. Is it clear? Is it clear to you? So this is the generating function. You are given a sequence of numbers a0, a1, a2, etc. The generating function g of x or it can be written as f of x. In terms of x, you are writing that for these sequences in terms of powers of x. So this becomes g of x is equal to write the sequence as coefficients of the powers of x. You get a0 x raised to 0 plus a1 x raised to 1 plus a2 x raised to 2 plus etc. And goes on as an infinite polynomial. This is called the generating function of this particular sequence. Is it clear? Is it clear to you? Is this generating function clear to you? Okay. Okay, Anurag. Okay, Agar. So, So thus, in general, we can write g of x, the generating function g of x is equal to a0 plus a1x plus a2x square plus a3x cube, etc. So this is the generating function. Here we are eliminating this x term because x raised to 0 is 1. Okay. Next, so that is what is written in the notes also. Now, when we generalize it, we can write it as that is this is summation, isn't it? Here we are taking the sum of all the terms, so we can write it as sigma i ranges from zero to infinity. Here a ranges from zero, and we don't know up till where the sequence goes, so it goes from uh, zero to infinity and uh, it starts from zero so a i x raised to i this is the general form isn't it when you expand this summation you will get this sequence that is sigma i is equal to zero to infinity a i x raised to i is the summation general form of this particular sequence okay so given this sequence you can write it um, uh, given a particular sequence a0 a1 a2 etc you can write the generating function in this form or you can summarize it to this form that is sigma i is equal to now if you put i is equal to 0 you get a0 x raised to 0 the next when i becomes 1 you get a1 x raised to 1 plus next when you expand i is equal to 2 you get a2 x raised to 2 so the, the sequence in short you can write it uh, in sigma form or summation form like this a uh, sigma i is equal to 0 to infinity a i x raised to i this will generate this particular sequence when you put i is equal to 0 the next you put i is equal to 1 and take the sum this indicates summation okay this is called the generating function for the sequence a0 a1 a2 etc this is the generating series, uh, this sequence, and the gen uh, the sequence generated is a0, a1, a2, etc. Okay, now, hope this much is clear to you, the generating series. So this generating series, it is an infinite polynomial, okay, this generates an infinite polynomial. Now, let us see how we can 
this is uh, the sequence given is a0 a1 etc now we are going to uh, find out we are going to define certain sequences and um, how can we generate uh, how can we define the generating function for given sequences so hope you had written down at least g of x Okay, just write down this formula, g of x is equal to a0, x raised to 0, etc. Write that and, uh, and either g of x or f of x you can write. Write the sequence and write, uh, and below that you can write, it is the generating function. It is an infinite series of, um, it is an infinite polynomial that generate the sequence a0, a1, a2, etc. Then, now let us see some examples of generating examples of sequences and how to generate sequences. Generating functions for given sequences. Generating how how can you uh, find out the generating functions for certain given sequences? So let us take the first sequence. Write the setting generating functions for given sequences. The first sequence, let me see. The first sequence I'm giving you is 0, 0, 0, 0, etc. What is the generating function? What is the generating function? G of x is equal to a0 x raised to 0 plus a1 a1 x raised to 1 plus a2 x raised to 2, etc. It goes on, isn't it? Or instead of this term, you can just start uh, that uh, series like this, a0 plus a1x plus a2x square, etc. This is the sequence. You can write the sequence. And here, what is the given sequence? What is a0, a1, a2, etc.? What is a0, a1, a2, etc.? A0, a1, a2, etc. What is a0? What is a1? What is a2? Yes, all are zeros, isn't it? So when you substitute here, when you substitute here, what do you get? 0 plus 0 into x plus 0 into x squared. So everything turns out to be 0. So g of x is equal to 0. Isn't it? So the function g of x turns out to be 0 for this particular sequence. So now let us move on to the next sequence. The second sequence. 1, 0, 0, 0, etc. to infinity. What will you get? What is g of x? g of x is the general form of the function is a0 plus a1x plus a2x square plus a3x cube, etc. So what, what will this function be, g of x? What is a0? What is a0? What is a0? One very good one, and this a zero is one. What is a one? Zero. This is a zero. This is a one. A two, etc. This is the sequence. We are just uh, put, putting these sequences as coefficients in this function g of x. So this is zero x and ever uh, zero into x square. This turns all these terms turn out to be zeros, and we get g of x is equal to one. So generating function for this particular sequence is one. Okay, now let us move on to the next sequence. I think you can write the sequence yourself again. Okay, suppose it's just the 3, 2, 1, 0. What, what will be the sequence? G of x. Yeah, this is a0, this is a1, a2, a3. Okay, so you get 3, a0 plus a1x plus a2x square, then the rest are all zeros. Okay, the rest are all zeros. So, the function g of x is equal to 3 plus 2x is equal to 3 plus 2x plus x square. This is the function g of x for this particular sequence. So, you can take any, this is an infinite sequence. Okay, so here, given any sequence, uh, after x square, the rest of the terms turn out to be 0 because you're multiplying uh, the powers, uh, the coefficients around 0, so it turns out to be 0, so you will get only the first three terms, and that is g of x. 
Is it clear? Any doubts? Now I'm going to give you another sequence, the fourth sequence, okay. From this next sequence onwards, we have to do some derivation and all. So let me take... So the fourth sequence given is... 1, 1, 1, 1, etc. Okay. So here, from these, from both sequence onwards, we are going to apply one operation called the multiply, multiply, shift, subtract method to find the generating function. The other function, the till three, we had just substituted the coefficients and found out. But here, from this section, from this step onwards, we are, we are going to apply this method to find out the generating functions, multiply, shift, subtract method. Okay, uh, so let us see how to do it. So given this particular sequence, what you have to uh, do is write the generating function. The first step is to write the generating function. What is g of x? Here a0 is 1, a1 is uh, 1, again a2, etc. is 1. So what is the function g of x? a0 plus a1x plus a2x square plus a3x cube, etc. Here a1, a2 are all 1. So instead of writing 1 into x square, 1 into x cube, etc. I'm just writing the sequence after multiplying it. Okay. Now, next what I'm going to do is, I'm, do, I'm going to multiply this uh, function. So I want to generate uh, a function which is of the closed form. This is an infinite sequence. This is a sequence, isn't it? I must, this is an infinite sequence. So I want to bring it to a closed formula. I, I want to find out a general formula for this particular sequence. So for that, the when we apply the multiply shift subtract method, this is step one. You have to first write down draw, write the generating function. Second step, you multiply this function g of x by x x into g of x. This is the second step. You multiply this g of x by x. So what will you get when you multiply g of x by x? First term when you multiply it by x, you will get x. So instead of writing it here, I'm just shifting and writing it below this x so that it's easy for me to do the operation. So x into 1, I get x. I'm leaving this space blank because I want to do some arithmetic operations. So I'm just writing it by shifting it one position to the right. Okay, so I'm multiplying this g of x by x. So first term when I multiply x into 1, I get x. I write it below x. Then when I multiply x by this x, second term x, I get x square. I write it below x square. Then when I multiply this by the third term, I will get x cube. I'm writing it below x cube so that it is easy for me. All x terms will be aligned. All x square x cube terms will be aligned and so on. Okay. So this goes on in indefinitely. Okay, it's an infinite polynomial. So I had multiplied g of x by x and uh, I got this particular sequence. Okay, next what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract these two because when I subtract g of x and uh, uh, x g of x, certain terms in this will cancel, isn't it? I can cancel many terms so that um, uh, I can bring it to a closed form. Okay, the infinite series will be cancelled off and I can bring it to a closed formula. So now the third step what I'm going to do is I'm minusing g of x, x g of x from g of x. That is g of x minus x into g of x. What will I get when I minus? 1 minus, here it is assumed to be 0, isn't it? You get 1, then x minus x. I'm, I'm taking the uh, and minusing g of x, uh, x g of x from g of x. So x minus x, what will it, what, what will it be? Zero. Then x square again minus x square. I'm minusing these two terms. Okay. 
So again, it turns out to be then x cube minus x cube again zero, and this goes on. So all these terms except the first term turns out to be zero, isn't it? So g of x is equal to g of x minus x g of x is equal to one. g of x minus x g of x is equal to one. Isn't it? Now, in this left hand side, I'm taking g of x as common. I get 1 minus x. g of x is common to these two terms. So I'm taking it as a common term and then writing the remaining 1 minus x is equal to 1. Or I get g of x, the generating from function g of x to 1 by 1 minus x. So for the gen for the sequence, for the sequence 1, 1, 1, etc., the generating function is 1 by 1 minus x. Is it clear? Is it clear to you? Is it clear to you? Is, are these steps clear to you? This is this step is followed for generating all other sequences. So you have to understand how I had done this, how to do this. Is it clear to you? Do you want me to repeat? So what we had done is given a particular sequence, you have to find this generating function g of x. To find this, what, uh, given this sequence, you have to generate this sequence. So for that, we have to write the general form of the generating function g of x is equal to with these a0, a1, this is a0, a1, a2, etc. This has coefficients, we have to write the generating function. You know, generating function is in powers of x. That's why we are writing g of x. So in this, instead of x raised to 0, we have a0, x raised to 0, that is 1 plus x square, x cube, etc. Then all these coefficients are 1 because a0, a1 are all 1. So you get g of x is equal to 1 plus x plus x square, x cube, etc. The second step, now this is a, a simple method that we are using. So you multiply this g of x by x so that I can uh, cancel out these terms easily. That's why I'm multiplying by x. If I multiply g of x by x, I get 1 um, I get one into x, x, which I can cancel with the second x. Now x into x, I get x square, which I can cancel with the second term. That's why I'm multiplying with x. OK, look at the terms and choose the value to be multiplied. So x, g of x, I get. Uh, 1 into x, x, I'm writing it below x so that it is easy for me to cancel out. Then uh, x into x, I get x square, I'm writing it below x square, and so on. Now I got x, g of x. Next is I'm minusing these two, g of x minus x, g of x is equal to, I get 1, here it is, nothing is there to minus, so 1 minus 0, 1, and x minus x, this will cancel, this also will cancel, this also will cancel, since these are all minus, because I'm minusing it. So I get g of x minus x g of x to be 1. Others have turned out to be zeros. So now I'm taking g of x as common and uh, one my g of x into 1 minus x is equal to 1. Or I can write g of x is equal to 1 by I'm bringing it below 1. OK, g of x is equal to 1 by 1 minus x. Is it clear? Is it clear? Any doubt in this? Is it clear? Okay, Agarsh. Okay. Okay. So now let us move on to the next sequence. So this particular sequence, you know, this is a standard formula. Okay. So you have to, uh, there are certain formulas which you should learn by heart. Hmm? Okay, this is one such formula that is for the sequence 1, 1, 1, the generating function g of x is equal to 1 by 1 minus x. For this particular sequence, g of x is 1 by 1 minus x because uh, in later derivations, we have to apply this formula. Okay, so there are certain standard formulas. I will be marking that for you. You have to study it by heart. Okay, so uh, the for the sequence 1, 1, uh, infinite sequence 1, 1, the generating function g of x is 1 by 1 minus x that you have to study. You have to buy heart. Okay. And uh, we found out how to get this formula. It is using this method that we had derived this formula. Is it clear? 
Is it clear? So this you have to buy her. Just put it in boxes. Generating function for uh, the infinite sequence 1 is 1 by 1 minus x. Okay. Now let us move on to the next sequence. So given any sequence, you, may, you should be able to find out its generating function. Okay. So let us move on to the next sequence. I think this was fifth one, isn't it? Fifth one. One, two, four, eight, etc. Okay. How will you write? Now, what is the first step? This is the given sequence. You have to find the generating function for this given sequence. How will you find out the generating function? What is the first step? What is the first step? Write g of x. g of x is equal to a0 plus a1x. a0, a1, a2, a3, etc. So a0 is 1 plus a1 into x plus a2 into x square plus a3 into x cube plus so on. Isn't it? Next, look at this term. I want to cancel out the infinite series. So to cancel this 2x, I must multiply this 1 by 2x. Isn't it? Earlier I wanted to cancel x, so I multiplied this 1 by x. Now, now I want to cancel 2x. So I should multiply this 1 by 2x so that I can cancel it out. Isn't it? So this g of x, you have to multiply g of x by 2x. Okay. So that I can cancel the other terms. Just look at these two and you will be able to identify which one to mult multiply. So if I multiply 1 by 2x, I can cancel this 2x. Isn't it? Is it clear? Just look at these, compare the terms and find out by multiplying by which term these sequences get cancelled or you get a familiar sequence. Okay, so g of x. Now when I multiply, what will I get with 1? 2x into 1. I get 2x. Then 2x into 2x. I get 4x square. Isn't it? Then 2x into third term. I'm multiplying this g of x by 2. The entire thing is multiplied by 2x. So g of x, um, then x, I get 8x cubed and so on. Isn't it? And I'm just shifting it and writing it so that these terms come together and easy for me to cancel. Now, next step, what is the next step? What are you going to do in the next step? Anyone please say what are you going to do in the next step? What will you do in the next step? What is the next step? Subtract. Yes, what are you going to subtract? From which one are you going to subtract? g of x minus g of x minus 2x into g of x. What will you get after minusing? 1 minus 0, you get 1. Then all these terms get cancelled, isn't it? Because 2x minus 2x, 4x square minus 4x square, 8x cubed minus 8x cubed, all these terms get cancelled and you will get 1 on the RHS. Isn't it? Now, next step, what are you going to do? Look at the left-hand side. G of x, you can take it as common. 1 minus 2x is equal to 1. Isn't it? Next. Now, what is the, so, what is g of x now? g of x is equal to 1 by 1 minus 2x. Okay. So for the sequence 1, 2, 4, 8, etc., the generating function is 1 by 1 minus 2x. Is it clear? So for this infinite polynomial, we have generated a closed formula. Isn't it? Is it clear? Any doubt? Is it clear? Did you understand how to generate the sequence? So just look at uh, how, uh, if you cancel, uh, how can you eliminate these poly infinite polynomials? 
look at the terms and find out which term you should multiply. Okay. Is it clear? Any doubts? Shall I proceed to the next one? Shall I proceed? Okay, Akshara, okay. So the sixth one. So there are a lot of uh, sequences. You will be given sequences and uh, you will be asked to write down this generating function, okay? So the next sequence is one, minus one, one, minus one, etc. So this is again an infinite sequence. I want to find out the function, generating function corresponding to the sequence. So what is g of x? First step is to write the generating function g of x. g of x is equal to a0 plus a1. This is a0, you know, a1, a2, a3, etc. So a0 plus a1x plus a1. a1 is minus 1, isn't it? So this becomes minus, isn't it? a0 plus a1x. a1x means a1 is minus 1. So you get here minus x. Isn't it? 1 minus x. Then next term. What is the next term? Plus x square. Then again the next term is minus. So you get minus x cube. Isn't it? plus x raised to 4. It goes on like this. Isn't it? Now to cancel this term, I just need to multiply with x. 1 into x will give x. Isn't it? So I can multiply g of x by simply by x. I get, I can cancel the x term. So um, multiplying the first term by x, I get x. Second term, when I multiply by x, I get minus minus x into x, I get minus x square. Then third term, x square into x, I get plus x cube, isn't it? Minus x raised to 4, etc. Is it clear? I'm multiplying this polynomial using x. That's all I'm doing. I'm multiplying that polynomial by x. So next is minus x raised to 4 etc. This series goes on. Isn't it? What is the next step? Minus. Isn't it? g of x. Should I minus it? Or should I plus it? What should I do next step? Like the next step. To cancel out these terms, what should I do? Should I minus g of x and x g of x or should I add them? Should I? Yes. I should add them, isn't it? If I minus, this becomes minus x, minus x, which becomes minus 2x. So this won't cancel out. So I just need to add them. g of x plus x into g of x. That gives, when I add these two terms, these two polynomials, I get 1, and the rest of the terms will cancel out, isn't it? Since they are opposite signs, they will, when I add them, they will cancel out. So the right hand, right -hand side turns out to be 1. And now take g of x as common, g of x into 1 plus x is equal to 1 and g of x is equal to 1 by 1 plus x. So this is also a standard formula that you should remember. For this particular sequence, alternate minus and plus 1s, g of x is equal to 1 by 1 plus x. Okay. Is it clear? Is it clear? So two formulas that you should buy out is for the sequence 1, 1, 1, you have g of x is equal to 1 by 1 minus x. For the sequence 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1, etc., g of x is equal to 1 by 1 plus x. So these formulas you should buy out, okay? Is it clear? Is it clear? Okay, okay, Agash, okay. So now, now moving on to the next sequence. Seven sequence. One, two, three, four, five, etc. infinity. I think you can do it by yourself. Very easy. 
very easy. What is g of x? g of x is equal to a0 plus a1x plus a2x square plus a3x cube plus etc. Isn't it? Now what is x g of x? x into g of x it is equal to what is x g of x? x 1 into x I get x I'm writing it below x then 2x into x I get 2x square plus 3 into x 3x three square into x I get 3x uh, cube plus etc this goes on now again I'm going to subtract g of x minus x into g of x what will I get I get 1 here 1 minus 0 1 then 2 of x minus x 2 of x minus x I get plus x isn't it 3x square mi minus 2x square I get x square 3 minus 2 1 4 minus 3 1 so again I get here x cube and so on so this series you know that's why I told you the here for this particular series the sequence is 1 1 1 1 etc so for this you you know I told you you should know the generating function for 1 1 1 what is the generating function this this is the, gener uh, the sequence uh, generating function corresponding to this sequence so for that the generating function for 1 1 is 1 by 1 minus x so you have to study these sequences by heart so that you can apply it here so this becomes 1 by 1 minus x. That's why I told you that some so there are certain sequences which you should buy out. So g of x um, minus x g of x is equal to 1 by 1 minus x because we, we know for the sequence 1 1 it is 1 by 1 minus x. So take g of x as common you get g of x into 1 minus x is equal to 1 by 1 minus x or g of x is equal to 1 by 1 minus x the whole square. Okay, this g of x, I'm bringing it down. So g of x in 1 minus x into 1 minus x, I get 1 minus x, the whole square. So the generating function is g of x is equal to 1 by 1 minus x, the whole square. Okay, for the sequence 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. For the sequence 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. The generating function is 1 by 1 minus x, the whole square. So if you can remember all these sequence uh, generating functions you, are, you have to study it by heart so that whenever you get a sequence like this you can just substitute this formula okay is it clear is it clear it's a time I So, did you write it down? Did you write it down? Okay, then see your attendance. Generating function is very important. Get a little Either sequence and item generate an arena. Okay. 